The spring game is just a few days away and we've learned a lot over this past month. What big questions have been answered during camp? And what should we be watching for during the spring game? Joe Cook, managing editor at Inside Texas, stops by to give us the latest updates on the squad as spring ball winds down. As always, Inside Texas is your spot to stay informed on your favorite team day in and day out. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. It's been a fun spring, but let's see what we know now that we didn't know just a few weeks ago. Without further ado, let's get into it. Good to see you, Joe. And we know the national media likes to ham it up with the Quinn versus Arch narrative, but what is the actual current state of that dynamic? What have been the effects, if any, of Arch showing up on Quinn? Yeah, Arch showing up is a positive for, for Quinn Ewers. And I think this doesn't go directly to Arch Manning, although he definitely had an effect. But I think this goes to Quinn Ewers having a realization of what he needs to do in order to be a quarterback and and be the guy leading a program. And I remember asking Steve Sarkeesian early in March about you know the haircut and getting rid of the mullet and that type of thing because – a lot of people just knew Quinn Ewers as the mullet. Well, Quinn Ewers, if he wants to be successful, needs to be known as the quarterback. So over the past few months, he's definitely taken it serious. But when you have that look, and in addition to what's going on up here, he's definitely gotten into better shape. Of course, he's able to showcase all the different parts of his arm talent as well and has done a good job of that during the spring. So, you know, Quinn Ewers knew that Arch Manning was going to be a part of the program in this spring for quite some time. So I'm sure that in combination with everything that happened during the regular season, the positive results he saw during the bowl game after shoring up some of his fundamentals and then seeing Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson leave, he kind of understood what he needed to do in that program. And I think we've seen all that take place over these past, I think it's, you know, 10, 11 spring practices on our way into the spring game to where I don't think it's going to be much of a question that comes summertime, Quinn Ewers will be the the shoe-in to, to be the first quarterback barring something crazy from Malik Murphy or Arch Manning. For sure, and I'm glad you brought up Malik Murphy because he's likely your second string quarterback, not Arch. Do we finally get to see what the coaches have known about Malik's ability come Saturday? Yeah, that's what I'm really looking forward to. I, I do want to see the pass game. For me, that mostly falls on on the receivers, but I am really looking forward to seeing Malik because he's had quite a road here at Texas and he's only been here for a little over a year. Uh, he commits, and that's amid so many different things going on in the world at the time, namely COVID that affected how his career could progress. Then he has injuries. Then, of course, Quinn Ewers transfers. So there's a couple quarterbacks ahead of him last year. He sticks with it. He fights through injuries. Injury. Then when he is is back healthy at the first practice right after spring break, we see him at the number two spot behind Quinn Ewers, where he was at the end of last year after Card decided to enter the portal. He's he's made a lot of progress mechanically. He's a big guy. He's got big arms. He had a pretty long throwing motion last year and even in high school. Made a lot of progress on that. Of course, the progress with his health. When you're six foot five and you're 230 pounds, something like that, that's a lot of muscle that you can put behind the football. And, and that's what I really hope that he has an opportunity to show. I understand there's a lot of allure with, with Arch Manning being, you know, number one prospect, five star and, and a Manning and all that. But man, I'm, I'm excited to see what Malik can do because he's someone that's, it's really easy. He's really easy to root for being the engaging personality that he has been ever since I was able to meet him in 2021. And just so we can see publicly, you know, with our own eyes on, on TV, what the coaches have, have saw a lot of, not only on his huddle film, but also pretty regularly throughout practice. And whether that was on the scout team last year or with the, the twos at this point in spring football. Malik will be a lot of fun to watch live. And running back is odd because our two lead backs and Brooks and Keelan have been out. So a lot of our depth running backs have been getting a ton of reps, and we're hearing a lot of good things about them, even from last week's practice as well. We saw Reds run on social media, but Baxter and Blue are also making plays. What do you make of the running back room and its interesting state? Yeah, I know Savion Red's been the, the big topic of conversation, and not only when it has to do with the way football's moving with hybrid hybrid players are all over the place and breaking defense's rules. And of course, that, that run you showed or you mentioned, that was pretty cool. And to see someone 
take to that position quickly is is real encouraging. But I, I think it's been a great development that Jaden Blue has been able to work on the things that he needed to work on and, and find success in those areas. He's a great outside runner. He's a really good receiver, but he's didn't really come in like looking like a guy you'd think, oh, he's built for inside running. Well, if you're going to be a running back in this offense, you've got to do some inside running. And I think he's been able to show a lot of progress in that area. Uh, of course, with, with CJ Baxter, he's got all the physical talent but if you go back and watch his high school highlights there's a lot of instances where there's a a lineman running right in front of him and that's that's gap scheme and that's pretty much hey follow that guy and then keep running uh, because that's what he was able to do so well Sarkeesian runs that but he runs a lot of zone stuff it's not the easiest thing in the world I I think a lot of people think running back is just see hole hit hole well when it's zone obviously they they prefer it to be in a certain area but it could open up in a number of spots and following uh, where the the line men's rear ends are pointing is how you figure out where to go and that's something he's had to adjust to and so far it sounds like he's been able to do that and and make plays in the backfield as a result we'll figure out what we really know about the running back room probably a little bit later down the road because of the limited nature of Jonathan Brooks and you know I think in that clip of Savion Red you saw Keelan Robinson run up but he wasn't really wearing any it wasn't like he was suited up or anything like that. And those two guys are going to definitely factor in. But I think it does show that there's a pretty deep room there at running back and a, and a variety of skill sets. And that's exactly what Steve Sarkeesian likes. And in a rush first offense, he'll probably be able to show it pretty well during the spring game. Offensive line has been a weird room, too, with some shuffling around. But the interesting part is Cole Hudson was the starting right guard all last season and he's been injured. So when he returns, do we just have the same line as last year? Yeah, I think a a lot of what we've reported about the offensive line, it may not be to figure out who's the top four. And I know that's weird considering there are five unique positions. Still, you'll you'll hear coaches all the time, and even Kyle Flood say this, it's all about getting the best five on the field. So I think it's it's not so much about learning who the, the top four, top three is. I think you can pretty much take it to the bank that it's Banks, it's Christian Jones. It's not about those guys. You know where they're gonna be, but with Neto getting some reps at left guard with uh, Hayden Connor trying out center with Cam Williams trying out right guard with DJ Campbell trying there, especially without Hudson there. It's probably more about finding guy number five and six and seven and eight, because that's, you know, you would hope Texas is as lucky as it was last year with the offensive line being able to march out pretty much the same O-line every game. And the only change being a occasional use of, of DJ Campbell as opposed to Cole Hudson. But I, I feel like at, at this point in the spring, it's a lot about trying to figure out, okay, we know these guys are good enough, but where can we put them? And I think that's, I mean, Neto was someone I thought would be a tackle coming into college. And now here he is taking guard reps. And I was curious if Cam Williams could stick at tackle because man, that's a lot of man to move. And I, it seems like he'll, he's giving it a really good go at trying that. But man, if you, are able to load him up on the interior at guard, then even if Jake Majors stays at that center spot and holds it down for one more year or two more years, how many more years of eligibility he has left, well, then you got another big guy right there and then another big guy right by him who can really help him out because while Jake Majors has the tact and the and the knowledge, he's just not as big as some of those other guys. Like you mentioned, you, you have to remember Cole Hudson's going to be there when fall camp starts up and, of course, during s- summer workouts so he can work on his upper body because he didn't have a chance to do that for much of the last year. So we may not even know the full extent of what Cole Hudson offers as, on the offensive line yet. Tight end is a position of interest because we have a clear number one in Jatavion Sanders, but Gunnar Helm is starting to show his ability in the receiving game at practice. So what have we heard about Helm throughout the spring? Yeah, if you checked out Inside Texas over the weekend, you would have seen that uh, Helm caught a touchdown pass. And, you know, I think he has like two catches or something like that in his career. He hasn't gotten a ton of work with the ball in his hands. He was a guy who was a little bit more of a blocker or had had the frame to be a blocker. And, of course, with Jatavian Sanders, who's who's do it all, you're okay with the guy being able to block a little bit if you're going to let Jatavian release and go upfield and be the threat. For him to have a development and, and to be able to make plays in the past game and, and continue to be solid in the in the run and protection game, that'll be huge for this offense. But outside of him, I mean, there there are questions about that tight end room. But man, if Gunnar Helm can can really make some some strides, he's going to be a necessary part of the offense just because we know of the variety that Steve Sarkeesian prefers to use with his personnel sets and all the other aspects of his offense. And on defense, Edge has definitely been the biggest fan concern this spring, but we're seeing some improvement there. 
Ethan Burke has been progressing throughout camp and was holding up better against the run these past few practices as well. So is he looking like our starting buck over Finkley currently? Yeah, I think right now, you know, five months before the season starts, but I, I think he's the guy who's worked his way to the to the top of the depth chart just because he's able to provide a little bit more completeness at that position. Just a little bit more though. And that's not to say that Finkley lacks ability, but he's better against the run than against than you know rushing the passer. And again, like we talked about with Steve Sarkeesian having an emphasis on improving the pass game, he wants to he's also said he wanted to improve the pass rush. And and that's what Ethan Burke can do, at least from that. That, that buck position. It takes time for guys to develop, especially when they come into college and they're six foot seven like he is. And there's a lot of room to grow on someone who's six foot seven. He's been able to bulk up. He's been able to get to the the weight and the ability to anchor needed against the run. And of course, he's got the ability as a pass rusher to probably make a little bit more noise than anybody else at that position. So not totally surprising. I'm really curious to see what he does. Of course, you know, he has to be able to rush the passer, but that position has so many more responsibilities than just go forward. He's got to be able to play a little bit off the line of scrimmage. And I'm not sure if he's ever had to to do that. Uh, But otherwise, it seems like he's surged up and made a name for himself and could be starting opposite Baron Sorrell for the first team defense. Of course, the other position of note is that weak side linebacker and David Benda has had a great camp and he's held down that spot. But the fans are always curious about Anthony Hill. What's his progression look like as he's gotten more reps and more experience this spring? Yeah, going back to Thursday, uh, you talked to Jaron Thompson and, and Jade Barron when they were with the media, and they had really good things to say about Ant Hill. He's got just the athleticism needed, but if he's starting to show more signs of being assignment sound, then that's what really unlocks the the five-star potential of Anthony Hill, especially in a league where everybody's trying to put the linebackers in conflict. If you've got someone who's athletic enough to overcome some of, some of those advantages offenses gives themselves, that's huge. But he's going to have to do so much more at Texas than what he was doing at Denton Ryan. And so far, it sounds like he's been able to make Bendo work harder, make Mo Blackwell work harder harder they feel like they'll be able to get a good level of play especially alongside Jalen Ford but I'm excited to see it I'm sure there's going to be some wow plays and I bet that comes from opportunities he has when maybe uh, given chances to do some pass rushing but if I can see him take drops and read plays and read angles right and that'll be the most encouraging thing I think we'll see from him in in a potential spring game good stuff Joe thanks for coming by let the fans know where to find your work and You've been promoted to managing editor since our last video, right? Yes, sir. Managing editor at Inside Texas. Place to be. I know you throw the promo at the front of every video. I'll help you in the back end. Until the spring game, until April 15th, $1 gets you four months of premium access. So that's portal season, which starts on Saturday. Basketball portal, football official visits and other recruiting aspects. And then should get you a good chunk of fall camp. So definitely come check us out. Check out Inside Texas on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. And then I'm at JosephCook89 on Twitter. And that's a wrap on Joe Cook. Head over to Inside Texas and sign up today. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support Quality Texas content. As always, hook on.